Welcome to Between Two Meeples. I am Armando Castaneda, and I'm here to tell you about six games that actually get my teenagers to the table and having fun and not wishing they were texting somebody else or doing something else. Because I don't know about you, um, I have a 3, 5, 14, and 18-year-old, and sometimes my teenagers act like my 3 and my 5-year-old when it comes to playing games, short attention spans, and get them to the table is just as hard. I don't know about you, this is how it is for me. Let's talk about those six games. I broke them down into three different categories. First category, competitive. So competitive games means that there's only one true winner. There can only be one. And they are trying to best not only their siblings, but their parents. First game that comes to mind when that happens is Sheriff of Nottingham. So this is a great game, hand management game, a bribery and deceit and role playing game. So like you have a lot of different tangibles when it comes to this game. Um, it's everyone's trying to sneak goods into the town of Nottingham and the sheriff is going over there and screening through all of everyone's little uh, carriages or in the game, their bags. But so the hand management, you go out there, you take your hands. I think there's bread, cheese, uh, roosters, um, apples is the other one. Um, you have to shove all of those cards into the bag and you go, here you go, Sheriff. I am trying to bring in three apples today. Now, you can either bribe them and give them three, four, one, none. It doesn't really matter. But if they don't believe you, the Sheriff will open the bag. And if you are lying and you have contraband in the bag or any other good besides the good that you said that you're going to take, you owe the sheriff money and you do not get to collect any of your goods. They all get seized. Or the other thing goes the other way, which is where this gets fun, the bribery, the deceit. Whereas if you are honest and you say, I'm bringing in five bread loaves and the sheriff goes, no, I don't believe you, opens the bag and sure enough, there's five bread loaves. Now you have to pay up. So the sheriff would have to give you, I think it's like 10 coins worth of stuff because each good is worth some value if they do not believe what you were telling them. So it goes around. Everyone gets to play the sheriff at least twice in a four to six player game. Three, if you're doing a three player game, you have to be the sheriff three different times, but very worth it. Uh, just the deceit, the lies, the bribes, the, oh, hey, no, no, no don't do that or would i lie to you dad or you know what i mean so getting into role playing although in this small aspect very very fun uh the boards everything in it the box the container super super simple uh the coins everything is laid out within the box really nicely you have um these bags that close with little buttons and the cards everything's done really really nice and the to get it out of the box setup time maybe takes you three minutes put away time the exact same so that's one of the biggest factors that I'm going to tell you about. And with all these games is set up and tear down because my sons just, you know, if it takes us 20 minutes to set up the game, I've already lost their attention span. So Sheriff of Nottingham, game number one. Game number two, we're going to go with Disney Villainous. So Disney Villainous is a hand, manage hand management take that asymmetric character type game so the beauty of this game the original box if you go with just this one has six villains in it uh, but if you stick with the disney line you don't go with the marvel or the star wars they have expansions so you can get you know the evil queen expansion you can get the scar expansion you can get the cruella de vil expansion or the bigger and badder expansion, the bad guy from The Incredibles, I don't remember his name, Syndrome, and or my favorite, the Gaston expansion. So if you stick with the Disney one, uh, you have a possibility of like 21 characters that you can choose from, and every single character is absolutely different. And every single one of them, in my mind, except for there's like two or three that aren't really that fun because they just, just seem like overly complicated. But other than that, like, you can't lose. You can't go wrong. My sons, like, like to beat me with different characters. They like to, you know, learn new characters and then, you know, go to, like, so they just hop back and forth and go on and so on. And it's a, 
it is a really good family game. It really shows you it is a one v one v one v one, but at the end of the game, you're you you see my son trying to tag up, or my wife and my son trying to tag up to try to stop me, or my other son, or you know everyone's been spending all the game trying to stop me, and then one of my sons will come out of nowhere and win, or my wife, this is the she's always the quietest one at the table, will you know do something, and all of a sudden all three of us are just sitting there stunned because we just lost the game. So it is very, very strategic and very competitive. And my teens love that. Very simple. You only have four possible actions every turn. So it can't be any easier than that. And within that, whatever action you choose, you have possibly two to four actions within there as well. So not complicated at all. Very easy setup and tear down. Everyone has their own player mat and you share power tokens in the middle. Everyone has their own hand that they pull out of and their own fate deck that they pull out. So the cards aren't even intermixed with everybody else. So as far as ease to set up, one of the best ones, all the other villainous games will have a shared deck and some other things like that. So they're not bad if they do like the Marvel stuff. Uh, they, there, there is a Marvel Villainous out there, and they do have one expansion for that one as well. And then they have the new one, the Star Wars uh, Villainous, which is an option as well. So that moves us down to the third and final competitive game. So we've gotten through Sheriff of Nottingham, we've gotten through Disney Villainous, and now we are going to go through another uh, Disney type of game, which is Marvel Dice Throne. So, <clears throat> pow! Marvel Dice Throne. So it is a Dice Throne uh, spinoff from the first two. So if you've seen Dice Throne or know anything about it, um, it basically is, uh, you know, dice rolling, take that. Uh, asymmetric characters as well, just like uh, Villainous. Every character plays differently. So in this box here, uh, you got Scarlet Witch, Thor, Loki, and Spider-Man, all very thematic to their actual skills in real life. You know, you have Molnar, uh, you know, Spidey has his combos and his web. I mean, everything is pretty much um, whatever powers that they have in the movies or in the comics uh, is very reminiscent inside of the game. So theming-wise, they did a really good job of creating the characters and making sure that, you know, you are playing that character. Um, but it's very much like uh, advanced Yahtzee. So you have to roll the dice. You they all, Each dice has certain characters on it. And depending on how good of a roll you did, after you rolled three times or you can do one or two, whatever the case may be, then that's what you do and you choose to go. So seeing that I have two teenage sons, um, this game does... Everyone, in my opinion, everything that I've seen, it's always a 1v1, 1v1. This game is built for 1v1. Yes and no. Um, I do, I mean, as a 1v1 game, it is nice because it's just back and forth, hit, 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 hit. Um, but in a 2v2 game, in which I, you know, it's usually me and my wife battling my sons because they think that they're always going to be better than their parents and we have to teach them otherwise. So in a 2v2, the reason why I love it in a 2v2 format is because the way that you do damage to the opponent is based off of a dice roll. So um, I believe if it's one to two, you hit the person to your left. If it's a three to four, you hit the person to your right. If it's a five, uh, the opponent gets to choose. And if it's a six, I get to choose um, whoever I want. So the dice plays a big role into who you hit. And that's going to be um, a big key because, you know, sometimes one player is going to get beat up more than the other. And the team's going to have to learn to work together to either reduce the damage or, you know, figure out how to debuff somebody or figure out who to do. So at the end of the day, it's a team building sport for my sons. They have to learn to work together as a group to try to, you know, stop the parents from actually going over there and kicking their butt. And that's one of the biggest things that I enjoy seeing as a parent and my kids enjoy, because at the end of the day, they like to win just as much as everyone else. So um, if you want a very competitive game, you want to put your kids against your parents or, you know, boys, girls, however the, you decide to cut it up, um, 2v2 is a really, really good version of this game. And my kids love this every single time I pull it out. So, so this is where we get out of the competitive mode and we get into a little bit of cooperative mode. So this is the only team-based game that we have on the list. 
And this is where all four of us are on the same team and we're trying to complete the same mission. Or it could be three or it could be five. Uh, the game that I chose, it does do three to five players well. So keep, keep that in mind. So not to stall any longer or to get confused anymore, but, ooh, but the crews, the crews are the ones that you're going to want to pick up. They're a very small box game, and it's actually a trick-taking game. So the crew, hand management, co-op, trick-taking, I've already said all that. If you don't know what trick-taking means, it means it's a card game, uh, kind of like spades. I know a lot of people understand what spades is, so you, you got four players with cards in their hand, and everyone's trying to beat somebody else. Highest card wins. Um, the fun thing about this is is that sometimes like inside of the crew, you're going to have cards to say you have to win this number first. Then you have to win that number first, and then that number first. Or, sorry, you have to win that number first, this number second, that number third. And it has to be in that exact order, or you lose. Or somebody can't win a trick at all, or the communications break down. There's just so many different things that happen throughout the game. And each box has 50 different scenarios to make your round of crew that much harder every single time. And I think we've pulled out, uh, so the beauty of this is like they're great camping games. So if you guys go camping or anything else like that, like the box is little. All there is in there is a deck of cards, a few little wooden chips, and that's it. Like that's, that's all you need. That's the crew. Uh, you got Deep Space Nine or the Quest for Planet Nine, sorry, and then Mission Deep Sea. I get them all confused. Um, but they both play the exact same. The, the reason why you would want them both is because the crew uh, very much like spades where it is um, true to form trick taking the crew throws in a little bit of variability when it comes to like the actual cards um, so it does change it up a little bit the cards are much better they, they give you pictures in there um, where you know you can't win this one at all or this person can't do that so they're just it's very very different and they're very very good play um, I would recommend them both. Don't just say one is better than the other because they are both different. Play the exact same, but the missions that they bring to the table are both excellent. So that is the crew, whether it be Deep Sea or Quest for Planet Nine. So let's move into party games. So this is another one where... We call them party games because they can be played with like four to 20 players or whatever. So it's not necessarily that they are party games, uh, although we do tend to pull them out more uh, when we have like six, eight, 10 people. I have played them a lot at four because my kids love them so much. Uh, remember my kids are very, uh, at the end of the day, once I get them to the table, they are very competitive and that I, I use their competitive, always want to beat dad at everything uh, to my advantage. So the first one, is articulate so for those of you who train played like uh trivial pursuit or uh, i can't even think of anything right now i put myself on the spot and i can't think of anything but it's a knowledge based game and articulate is relatively simple we can open up the box and i can show you all the con oh the fart box fart box blah, blah, blah. the box that farts every time you open it all right so articulate you get a deck of cards, all of these things you get, and you get a 30 second timer and a board that tells you what category to choose. You pull a card and you get to describe the card. Let's see if you guys can get it. I would tell my kids, uh, you need this for your chores. You have to rake them up and you cry every time you have to rake and you want me to go buy you this because you are too lazy to rake it. Um, it's not with the grass it's with the things that fall off of the big trees and you have to go push them around and put them in a bag so you would use this to push air towards them you got it leaf blower if that is what you were thinking so something like, like that you have 30 seconds basically to give as many of descriptions as you can to win as many cards as you can to go around the board as fast as you can and the fastest team essentially wins. So it is a very, very simple game. The 
actual rule book itself is like a little pamphlet, a one page pamphlet. Like I feel like their sex ed pamphlets are way thicker than this thing is. If you have teens, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So articulate. That is the one game if you want to do knowledge that we find to be the most, um, I guess, you, you know, it's, the other trivia games aren't bad, but these ones here are just more fun. Um, you know, not as necessarily you have to be the smartest person in the world. They're more into life type things. So give Articulate a try. Um, I feel like you will enjoy it. You will love it um, as my family does. So Articulate. And speaking of fast-talking descriptive games, that leads us right into six. And if you thought that uh, not saying one word was going to be hard, then this next game, which is Taboo, is going to be even harder because Taboo is a game just like Articulate where you have to know what you're trying to describe, except Taboo adds five additional words that you cannot use in your description of that object. So, let's go ahead and pull this out. I'll show you what's inside. Once again, very easy. This thing, that's, what, one page? Trying to describe, you know, the rules. Super easy. The box itself, very few things in here. So, you pull up a card. All right, first thing, 30 seconds on the clock. All right, I have two of them. They are covered by my pants. They are hairy. And it will hurt me if you kick me there. Do you know what it is? Yes. If you said my legs, you are absolutely correct. That is what I would have guessed as well. So, but if I would have said feet or anything else like that, knees, it was on the card. Then they get to use this little thing that's annoying. And they get to take the card away. And I lose points. And I don't like to lose points. So, but they love to squeak that thing. And the box loves to fart. So, Taboo. That is the game for everybody. If you've played it before or you try to play it with your teens, uh, I suggest try it again. If you've played any of these games with your teens of late or they haven't, try it again. Um, they are amazing. If you have any suggestions for me of games that I should be playing with my teenagers, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, a lot of these games I go through here and I purchase, I think I've forced my teens to at least play 100 games right now, and I collect all of these things, um, all of these games to you know, be able to create these videos. I have tips on how to buy them. Um, if you want to click on this link up here, you can learn about my six basic tips and tricks that I use to find deals, find games at half price, find deals at buy two, get one free, find deals at, you know, get a lot, half, whatever the case may be. I love games, but I also love saving more. So click this link right here. Don't forget, like and subscribe. I'm Armando Castaneda. Thank you.